Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Blender Bridge for plasticity. Now, we got a couple things to cover, but in this video, we're gonna show you how to set up the Blender Bridge in plasticity and Blender and how to use it. So let's talk about the model that we're using here. This concept car we modeled in a series on this channel. So if you want to follow along, you can go ahead and do that. You should be able to find the link in the description. It should be here on the screen as well. So we're going to be taking this model to Blender, and then we're going to make some changes to the wheels, and we're going to see how things update. So this model contains solid bodies as well as sheets or surfaces, and we want to make sure that both of those elements do come into Blender. Now, the traditional workflow when you're coming from a CAD program into a poly program like Blender is to export your model as an STL for tries or an OBJ if it ha already has a remesh with quads or any of the other mesh formats. Now, in this video, we'll be using the Blender Bridge, which sort of skips that process for us, and it allows us to have some additional options on the Blender side. Before we get into that, let's hop over to the Plasticity's unofficial website. This link in the description is the location where you can download the Blender Bridge add-on, and it also talks you through how to install it, as well as how to use it. Now, if you are using a 30-day trial, you will not be able to use Blender Bridge. It's only available for the Indie and Studio licenses. If you're looking to purchase a license, I wanna note that we are an affiliate for Plasticity. So if you use the code LEAD10, that'll give you 10% off at checkout. That also does help out the channel. So if you haven't purchased it yet and you are looking, make sure that you do use the code LEAD10. So Blender Bridge is a bridge between Plasticity and Blender, pretty much self-explanatory. But when we get into the nuances of how to use it, there are some options and we simply just wanna make sure we know what's going on. So the first thing that we wanna do is go to our preferences inside of Plasticity, go to server and make sure that it's enabled. The local host and port number are going to be the same in both locations by default. So if you haven't changed them, you shouldn't have to worry. Now, before we go too much further, I do want to make a quick note on the way that the faces are divided on the surface. You can see here that the way in which it was modeled, we've got these face divisions, and that'll be important downstream because it'll do some automatic UV painting, and it'll allow us to see and break those up. So if you have control over how the surfaces are divided and built in plasticity, that will trickle down into Blender downstream. Of course, we can modify that as we want, but for the most part, it does come directly over. So once we're inside of Blender, just installing an add-on is the same process you use for any other add-on. So in your preferences, you go to add-ons and you select install, you find the location where you downloaded that zip file. So it's just simply called plasticity Blender add-on install it, and then make sure that you click it to enable it. And once it's enabled, using the N key on the keyboard, you'll find a tab for plasticity, and you simply connect, making sure that the local host and port number are the same in both locations. Now, once it's connected, we now have a connection to plasticity, but nothing happens until we hit the refresh button. So for example, if we bring everything over at 1.0 scale and we select refresh, this is gonna bring the model in at the scale it was in plasticity. Now, if I try to redo that scale to 2.0 and I hit refresh again, nothing is gonna happen. And that's because we've already brought the model over. So we need to remove, get rid of it, delete the hierarchy and then refresh it and it'll come in at that new scale. So some of these options that we have are going to happen at the time of import. Same thing with the checkbox for only visible. If we have a bunch of hidden solids and sheets or surfaces, then we only wanna bring the visible stuff. We need to check that before we refresh and bring it in. So the refresh process happens basically once. We're gonna bring everything into Blender once. However, there is a live link option. Now the live link option allows us to go back to plasticity and make some changes. So for example, I'm gonna use O to offset and then I'm gonna sort of bring this in maybe taper it a little bit, maybe add a fillet to the corner here. And then we're gonna go back over to Blender and notice that those changes have been made. So that live link allows us to bring in the bodies from Plasticity, continue to model them inside of Plasticity, and then have the changes update inside of Blender. 
So that is a really nice feature, especially when you're still working on concepts and you're not quite done yet. And for example, with things like the rims on this car, we didn't put any effort into detailing those in the series. They were only placeholders, but now we could either decide to model them in Blender or we can go back to plasticity and continue to work on those individual solid bodies, add the details that we want, then come back and have that live link to Blender. So the next thing that we want to look at here is I'm going to select one of the bodies and notice that it opens up a couple of options. In this top section, we have something called refacet. Now, if we take a look at the facets that come over directly from plasticity, what we can do here is we can make changes to some of these options. For example, we can modify min and max values, the edge cord and angle tolerances, and click on this refacet button. Now, I'm not gonna do it here in this video because I think the way that this comes in by default for this surface model is fine, but if you are working with sort of these B-Rep solid mechanical type models, you may find that you want to do some try or end gon refaceting of your model and see if that helps the way in which it's represented in Blender. This doesn't have any effect on the plasticity model inside of plasticity. It only affects the import and the reconfiguration of those into a mesh body on the Blender side. Now, in addition to this, I'm gonna go back to my sort of rendered view here. In addition to this, we also have these options at the bottom for auto marking edges. Now, again, if you're working on more of these sort of hard surface type models, auto marking the edges can help you downstream because it'll mark those edges as seams or sharps. And we also have the option to paint plasticity faces. Now, this is the one I mentioned, the way in which it was modeled and the way the faces were broken up is directly going to come in here if we use this option and that allows us to do some UV unwrapping or adjustments on that side. Which brings me to the next point is now that we have this, we can go into UV editing and we can do some UV unwrap and then we can take a look at what this looks like in the UV editor. If you are breaking up your models in a certain way in plasticity, when they get translated into Blender, there is some automated processes that could happen. So for example, the window trim here, because of the marked seams and the way in which we are coloring it based on those faces, we can apply our textures and our appearances directly to some of those areas. Now, this isn't a perfect solution, of course, because there is a little bit of back and forth that has to happen, but there are some of these tools available to us when we actually create these imports that can be helpful downstream. Once more, all of that is to say that we now have a direct connection and we also have a live link between Blender and Plasticity, which means we no longer have to create a model, export it as a mesh and import it into Blender. If we make changes to the model, we have to go back and re-export another mesh version. We now have this direct connection that allows us to do those things simultaneously in both programs. Now, we all know that Plasticity is extremely powerful. It has a lot of modeling capabilities and it's focused on the modeling task. It's not really a renderer by by any means. It's not going to be used for animation. We're really focused on the modeling. So having this Blender Bridge add-on for both the Indie and the Studio license is a huge step toward anybody that's using it in that workflow. Now, if you have any questions on this, please let me know. Leave a comment in the description. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.